contract of partnership defined article 1767 of the civil code by the contract of partnership two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money property or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves two or more persons may also form a partnership for the exercise of a profession elements essential elements meeting of the minds b to form a common fund three with intention that profits or losses will be divided among the contracting parties essential features there must be a valid contract number two the parties must have legal capacity to enter into a contract number three there must be mutual contribution of money property or industry to a common fund number four there must be a lawful object number five the purpose or primary purpose must be to obtain profits and divide the same among the parties characteristics the contract of partnership is consensual perfected by mere consent number two nominate designated by a specific name number three bilateral or multilateral entered into by two or more persons number four onerous certain contributions have to be made five principle because it does not depend for its existence or validity upon some other contract and number six preparatory because it is entered into as a means to an end existence of a valid contract partnership is a voluntary relation created by agreement of the parties the contract may be oral or written express or implied from the acts and declarations of the parties subject to the provisions of article 1771 to 773 and to the statute of frauds there must be a valid consideration or contribution existing as between the partners articles of partnership a written document stating the name nature or purpose and location of the firm and defining among others the powers rights duties and liabilities of the partners among themselves their contributions the manner by which the profits and losses are to be shared and the procedure for dissolving the partnership partnership fiduciary in nature personal relation in which the element of delictus personae choice of the person exists involving as it does trust and confidence between the partners unless otherwise provided in the partnership agreement no one can become a member of the partnership association without the consent of all the other associates neither would the presence of a period for its specific duration or the statement of a particular purpose for its creation prevent the dissolution of any partnership by an act or will of a partner mutual agency arises and the doctrine of delictus personae allows them to have the power although not necessarily the right to dissolve the partnership the partner must however act in good faith not that the attendance of bad faith can prevent the dissolution of the partnership but that it can result in a liability for damages partnership in or by stopo a partnership liability may be imposed upon a person under principles of a stopo where he holds himself out or permits himself to be held out as a partner in an enterprise there is no actual or legal partnership relation but merely a partnership liability imposed by law in favor of third persons. It is the substance and not the name of the arrangement. 
which determines the legal relationship, although the designation adopted by the parties should be considered as indicative of their intention. The existence and non-existence of a partnership must be determined from the conduct of the partners. Any documentary evidence bearing thereon and the testimony of the parties. Legal capacity under Article 1782. Persons who are prohibited from giving each other any donation or advantage cannot enter into a universal partnership. There is no prohibition against a partnership being a partner in another partnership unless authorized by statute or by its charter a corporation is without capacity or power to enter into a contract of partnership. Contribution of money, fund, property, or industry. The partners must contribute capital, which may be money or property or their services or both, to a common fund. Property contributed may be real, personal, corporeal, or incorporeal. Credit or even mere goodwill may be contributed. The word industry has been interpreted to mean the active cooperation, the work of the party associated which may be either intellectual or physical. A limited partner cannot contribute mere industry. There must be proof that there be contribution of money, property, or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing the income profit obtained therefrom. Artist takes part in carrying on the enterprise and thus subjects himself to partnership liability to outsiders. He furnishes sufficient consideration for the promise and acquires all the rights of a co-partner. Legality of the object. When the object is unlawful, that is, contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy, no partnership can arise therefrom, as the contract is void ab initio. No partnership can arise, as the contract is inexistent and void ab initio. A partnership may be organized for any purpose except that it may not engage in an enterprise for which the law requires a specific form of business organization purpose to obtain profits. It is necessary that there be an intention to divide the profits among the members, although not necessarily in equal shares. A stipulation which excludes one or more partners from any participation in the profits or losses is void. For the parties, any person capacitated to contract may enter into a contract of partnership. Bar question 1994. Persons prohibited from giving each other any donation or advantage cannot enter into universal partnership. Another question. May a corporation be a partner? The general rule is a corporation cannot become a member of a partnership in the absence of express authorization by statute or charter. That's JMT Wasson and Corporation versus Bolanos. Exception, a corporation may enter into a joint venture with another where the nature of that venture is in line with the business authorized by its charter. A joint venture is a form of partnership governed by the law on partnership. Felix Mining versus CIR. Consent or intention to become a partner. General rule, no person can be held liable as a partner, nor may he assert rights as such without having given his consent. Exception is to help. Intention is to be determined from one the nature of the relation agreed upon rather than the name the parties may give into it. Number two, if there is a written agreement from the terms of the writing. And number three, action and conduct of the parties. 
lawful subject matter and cause. Article 1347 of the Civil Code. All things which are not outside the commerce of man, including future things, may be the object of a contract. All rights which are not intransmissible may also be the object of contracts. No contract may be entered into upon future inheritance except in cases expressly authorized by law. All services which are not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy may likewise be the subject or object of contract. Article 1770. A partnership must have a lawful object or purpose and must be established for the common benefit or interest of the partners. Article 1411, Civil Code. When the nullity proceeds from the illegality of the cause or object of the contract and the act constitutes a criminal offense, both parties being in pari delicto, they shall have no action against each other and both shall be prosecuted. Moreover, the provisions of the penal code relative to the disposal of effects or instruments of a crime shall be applicable to the things or the price of the contract. This rule shall be applicable when only one of the parties is guilty. From the innocent one may claim what he has given and shall not be bound to comply with his promise. 1414. When money is paid or property delivered for an illegal purpose, the contract may be repudiated by one of the parties before the purpose has been accomplished or before any damage has been caused to a third person. In such case, the courts may, if the public interest will thus be subserved, allow the party repudiating the contract to recover the money or property. Effect of Illegality, Article 1409. The following contracts are inexistent and void from the beginning. 1. Those whose cause, object, or purpose is contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. What is the effect on the parties? As a result of the nullity of the partnership contract, the parties thereto have no right to enforce claims which depend upon its validity. A party to the void partnership agreement may recover the amount contributed to him. Being void, the purpose for which the contribution was made did not come into existence and therefore the contribution was without any consideration. Thus, he who has paid in his share is entitled to recover it. However, a party may not recover the profits earned in the course of the partnership because they do not constitute the partner's contribution, but are the result of the object of the partnership. Considering the contract is non-existent by reason of its illicit object, it cannot give rise to the necessary action. It would be immoral and unjust for the law to permit a profit from an industry prohibited by it. What is the effect on third persons? When a third person deals with a partnership knowing its unlawful object or purpose, he can expect no aid from the law. Where third persons deal with a partnership without being aware of its illegal character, their good faith can inject life into an inexistent contract. Good faith may serve only as basis for the third party to demand indemnity from the partners. Contribution to Common Fund The cause of a contract of partnership which also constitutes part of its subject matter, is the mutual undertaking of the parties to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund. Such mutual undertaking is an essential characteristic of partnership, and its absence is considered an index that no partnership relation exists, although its presence is not necessarily a conclusive evidence of the opposite.
business for profit. Not only must the partnership be formed to carry on a business, it must do so for the purpose of livelihood or profit. Community of Interest, Article 1770. A partnership must have a lawful object or purpose and must be established for the common benefit or interest of the partnership. The fact that a partnership has a common fund and established for the common benefit or interest of the partners imply co-partnership of capital or property employed, joint powers of management and control, and co-ownership of the joint participation in the profits and losses. Co-ownership of capital or property. The partners become co-owners of what is contributed to the firm capital and of all property that may be acquired thereby and through the efforts of the members. Property of stock of the enterprise forms a community of goods, a common fund in which each party has a propriety interest. This should not be understood to mean that each and every partner should be a proportionate joint owner of every partnership property. Article 1769. In determining whether a partnership exists, these rules shall apply. Co-ownership or co-possession does not of itself establish a partnership. Whether such co-owners or co-possessors do or do not share any profits made by the use of the property. Without the other elements of partnership, this single circumstance could only constitute the relation of simple co-ownership. Co-ownership versus co-partnership in the creation. Under co-ownership, it is generally created by law. It may exist without a contract. For partnership, it is always created by a contract, whether expressed or implied. Under juridical personality, under co-ownership, there is none. But for partnership, it is a separate and juridical personality of its own. How about the purpose? Under co-ownership, it is the common enjoyment of a thing or right which does not necessarily involve the sharing of profits, while partnership, realization of profits, is the purpose. Duration under co-ownership, agreement to keep the thing undivided for more than 10 years is not allowed. Under partnership, there is no limitation upon the duration of a partnership. How about disposal of interest in co-ownership? Co-owners may freely do so, while in partnership, a partner may not dispose of his undivided or individual interest in the partnership so as to make the assignee a partner unless agreed upon by all the partners. Under the power to act with third persons under co-ownership, a co-ownership cannot represent the co-ownership, hence judgment against one co-owner will not bind the co-owners. Under partnership, a partner may bind the partnership. How about the effect of death under co-ownership? Death of a co-owner does not necessarily dissolve the partnership, while under partnership, death of a partner results in dissolution of the partnership. Joint purchase of land or property for the purpose of selling them at the profit to be divided in proportion to the interest of the purchasers does not necessarily make them partners since they make such a sale and division of profits by virtue of their respective titles as part owners. Conjugal partnership versus business partnership. What are the laws governing conjugal partnership? Conjugal partnership arises in case the future spouses agree that it shall govern their property relations during the marriage. What is the juridical personality? None. What is the commencement? It commences precisely on the date of the celebration of the marriage and any stipulation to the contrary is void. And what is the purpose? The purpose is to regulate property of husband and wife during marriage. And the distribution of profits is the shares of the spouses in the profits are 
divided equally. Who is going to manage? The husband's decision shall prevail in case of disagreement. Now, for business partnership, it is created by voluntary agreement of two or more partners belonging to either sex. It is governed by the stipulation of the parties and juridical personality uh, present. The partnership begins from the moment of execution of the contract unless it is otherwise stipulated. The purpose is to obtain profit. Distribution of profits are divided according to the agreement to the agreement of the partners or in proportion to their respective capital contributions. The management is shared equally by all the partners unless one or more of them are appointed managers in the Articles of Partnership. Joint Management and Control All partners have equal rights in the management and conduct of the partnership business. This rule does not preclude the associates from vesting by agreement in one member the sole management of the enterprise or any part of it without thereby defeating their intent to form a partnership. In that case, the making of the agreement to relinquish control is itself an exercise of the requisite right of control. Co-ownership of profits and participation in profits and losses. A mutual promise or undertaking of the parties to share in the profits of the business and make good the losses is an indispensable essential of a partnership contract. Rules to determine existence of partnership. Article 1769. In determining whether a partnership exists, these rules shall apply. The receipt by a person of a share of the profits of a business is prima facie evidence that he is a partner in the business, but no such inference shall be drawn if such profits were received in payment, like as a debt, by installment or otherwise, number two as wages of an employee or rent to a landlord, number three as an Annuity to a widow or representative of a deceased partner. Number four, an interest on a loan, though the amount of payment vary with the profits of the business. Fifth, as the consideration for the sale of a goodwill of a business or other property by installments or otherwise. The importance of this element is such that the law considers the receipt by a person of a share in the profits of a business prima facie evidence that he is a partner in the business. Article 1769, in determining whether a partnership exists, these rules shall apply. Number two, co-ownership or co-possession does not of itself establish a partnership, whether such co-owners or co-possessors do or do not share any profits made by the use of the property. Agreement to share gross returns is inconsistent with the idea of community of interest in the business. Joint ownership of the profits and joint sharing of the losses. Partners are supposed to share the fortunes of the business. They should be interested in its failure as well as successes. Consequently, if no profits have been made, no partner is entitled to any share as against the others, for there is nothing to share. But where the agreement is to share gross returns, the share is independent of the existence of profit and may take when there is loss. How is partnership formed? The general rule is 1771. A partnership may be constituted in any form. Owing to its consensual character, a partnership as a general rule may be oral or written, expressed or implied from the conduct of the parties as well as from their declarations. 1772. Every contract of partnership having a capital of 3,000 pesos or more in money or property shall appear in a public instrument, which must be recorded in the Office of the Securities and Exchange. The registration is to set a condition for the issuance of licenses to engage in business or trade. 
In this case, the tax liabilities of big partnership cannot be evaded, and the public can also determine more accurately their membership and capital before dealing with them. When immovables or real rights contributed, 1771, a partnership may be considered in any form, except where immovable property or real rights are contributed thereto, in which case a public instrument shall be necessary. Article 1773, a contract of partnership is void whenever immovable property is contributed thereto. If an inventory of said property is not made, signed by the parties and attached to the public instrument. What Article 7073 imposes as a requirement is the making of an inventory and its being attached to the public instrument and not the execution of the public instrument. Article 1768, the partnership has a judicial personality separate and distinct from that of each of the partners. Even in case of failure to comply with the requirements of Article 7072, first paragraph. Non compliance of Article 1772 does not prevent the acquisition of juridical personality. Acquisition of juridical personality presupposes a valid contract. Partnership term, commencement, this is under Article 1784, a partnership begins from the moment of the execution of the contract unless it is otherwise stipulated. Now, the term is the length of a partnership life depends, first of all, upon the agreement of the parties on the matter. No statutory time limit is prescribed. The partnership will last until the expiration of the term unless, in the meantime, an event supervenes which causes it to solution. If no term is fixed but the partnership is formed for a particular undertaking, the partnership will last until the completion of that undertaking, subject to the condition that there is no dissolution due to other causes. If neither a fixed term nor a particular undertaking is specified, the partnership is one at will, lasting only during the mutual consent of the partners and thus subject to dissolution at any time by their mutual agreement or by the act of any one of them alone. Article 1785, when a partnership for a fixed term or particular undertaking is continued after the termination of such term or particular undertaking without any express agreement, the rights and duties of the partners remain the same as they were at such termination so far as is consistent with a partnership at will. A continuation of the business by the partners or such of them as habitually acted therein during the term without any settlement or liquidation of the partnership affairs is prima facie evidence of a continuation of the partnership. Separate and juridical personality in general. That is under Article 1768. The partnership has a juridical personality separate and distinct from that of each of the partners, even in case of failure to comply with the requirements of Article 1772, first paragraph. Every contract of partnership having a capital of 3,000 pesos or more in money or property shall appear in a public instrument, which must be recorded in the Office of the Securities and Exchange Commission, that is Article 1772. Failure to comply with the requirements of the preceding paragraph shall not affect the liability of the partnership and the members thereof to third persons. Consequences of legal personality. Acquire and possess property of all kinds. Incur obligations. Bring civil or criminal actions in conformity with the laws and regulation of their organization. When no juridical personality acquired, Article 1775, associations and societies whose articles are kept secret among the members and wherein any of the members may contract in his name with third persons shall have no juridical personality and shall be governed by the provisions relating to co-ownership. 
The secrecy is not directed to third persons, but to some of the partners. The rule is intended to preserve the equality which must exist among the partners and to prevent any of them from defrauding the partnership or the other members. This being the case, it does not prohibit secret stipulations which are not designed to produce this result. Kinds of partnership as to object, 1776. As to its object, a partnership is either universal or particular. As regards the liability of the partners, a partnership may be general or limited. Universal partnership under 1777, a universal partnership may refer to all the present property or to all the profits. Universal partnership of present property, Article 1779. In a universal partnership of all present property, the property which belongs to each of the partners at the time of the constitution of the partnership becomes the common property of all the partners as well as all the profits which they may acquire therewith. A stipulation for the common enjoyment of any other profits may also be made, but the property which the partners may acquire subsequently by inheritance, legacy, or donation cannot be included in such a stipulation except the fruits thereof. The prohibition is in consonance with and gives effect to the general provision of the code, disallowing contracts upon future inheritance except in cases expressly authorized by law. Article 1347, no contract may be entered into upon future inheritance except in cases expressly authorized by law. Universal Partnership of Profits, Article 1780, a universal partnership of profits comprises all that the partners may acquire by their industry or work during the existence of the partnership. Movable or immovable property which each of the partners may possess at the time of the celebration of the contract shall continue to pertain exclusively to each, only the usufruct passing to the partnership. It does not extend to separate or joint acquisitions of the partners through any means, not requiring the exertion of human effort or intelligence, such as gifts or lottery prizes. Usufruct of future property does not pass to the partnership unless there is a stipulation to that effect. In short, all present property, all the property actually belonging to the partners are contributed and said properties become common property owned by all the partners and by the partnership. As a rule, aside from the contributed properties, only the profits of said contributed common property, not other profits. Note, profits from other sources may become common, but only if there is a stipulation to such effect. Property subsequently acquired by inheritance, legacy, or donation cannot be included in the stipulation, but fruits can be included. Now, under all profits, only the usufruct of the properties of the partners becomes common property, like owned by them and the partnership. Naked ownership is retained by each of the partners. All profits acquired by the industry or work of the partners become common property, regardless of whether or not said profits were obtained to the use of rock contributed. Presumption when kind of universal partnership is not specified. Article 1781. Articles of universal partnership entered into without specification of its nature only constitute a universal partnership of profits. Under Article 1378, when it is absolutely impossible to settle doubts by the rules established in the preceding articles and the doubts refer to incidental circumstances of a gratuitous contract, the lease transmission of rights or is more onerous than universal partnership of profits. Particular Partnership Article 1776 As to its object, a partnership is either universal or particular. 
As regards the liability of the partners, a partnership may be general or limited. Article 1783, a particular partnership has for its object determinate things, their use of fruits, or specific undertaking, or the exercise of a profession or vocation. Even a partnership involving or contemplating several transactions or undertakings in a particular kind of business constitutes a particular partnership. As to liability of partners, Article 1776, as regards the liability of the partners, a partnership may be general or limited. General partnership, which is ordinary, a general partnership is one wherein all the partners are liable with their individual property for partnership obligations. This is the most common form. Number two, limited partnership, sociedad en comandita. Limited partnership is one when only some partners are personally liable for partnership obligations. The other's liability are limited to their capital contribution. See, as to employment or business, commercial partnership or trading, a commercial partnership is one which has for its object the realization of some mercantile or commercial act, either as a means or an end. It is a partnership devoted exclusively to the buying and selling of personal property or merchandise for profit. Non-commercial partnership or non-trading, partnership formed by professionals for the exercise of their professions. Significance of distinction. Commercial partnership, it is a deemed merchant and subject to the provisions of the Code of Commerce relating to merchants. A partner has more powers of representation. While non-commercial partnership cannot be regarded as merchant and is exempt from the application of those provisions, a partner has less powers of representation. As to duration partnership with a fixed term, a period has been stipulated in the agreement. Partnership for a particular undertaking, a specific undertaking is indicated without specification of the term, but owing to the nature of its purpose. The partnership shall end upon the completion of the undertaking. Partnership at will. Partnership is designated to continue for no fixed period of time and is formed to last only during the mutual consent or pleasure of the parties, its existence being terminable at will of any one or more of them. Kinds of partners, basic classification, partnership may be classified from the point of view of their one, liability, two, contribution, three, degree or manner their connection with the partnership is known or made known, four, time they join the partnership, five, special duties, six, status after dissolution. General and limited partners as to liability. For a general partner, he has control and management of the business. Personally liable for partnership obligations. While for a limited partner, it is not entitled to participate in the management and control of the business. Is exempt from personal liability for the partnership obligations his liability being limited to his capital contribution. Capitalist and industrial partners as to their contribution. For a capitalist partner, contributes money or property to the partnership capital. For an industrial partner, contributed only his industry or services, cannot engage in business for himself unless the partnership expressly permits him to do so. And if he should do so, the capitalist partners may either exclude him from the firm or avail themselves of the benefits which he may have obtained in the violation of such prohibition with damages. Original in incoming partners. As to the time they join the partnership. So, 
for an original partner, one who becomes a member at the time of the organization. Incoming partner is one brought in as a new member of an existing partnership. He is liable for all the obligations of the partnership arising before his admission as though he had been a partner when such obligations were incurred. But his liability in respect to such obligations shall be satisfied only out of partnership property unless he stipulates otherwise. As to all obligations, his individual or separate property is not liable. Managing partner and liquidating partner as two special duties. For a managing partner, one to whom the other partners have entrusted or delegated the responsibilities of management. Liquidating partner or winding, one who is charged by agreement after dissolution or by law with the duty of liquidating the affairs of the partnership. What are ostensible, nominal, and dormant partners as to degree or manner their connection with the partnership is known or made known. For ostensible partner, name is made known and appears or is held to the world as a partner, whether or not in reality he is such. In fact, he is not a partner. He is a partner by Stopo. For a nominal partner also appears or is held out to the world as a partner but has no real interest in the firm or business also comes within the concept of a partner by a stopo. For a dormant partner, this is the silent or secret partner. Article 1834, the liability of a partner under the first paragraph, number two, shall be satisfied out of partnerships, assets, alone when such partner had been prior to the solution and known as a partner to the person with whom contract is made and so far unknown and inactive in partnership affairs that the business reputation of the partnership could not be said to have been in any degree due to his connection with it. His connection with the partnership is concealed and his name is not used by the firm and he does not take any active part in it so that he is generally unknown to those dealing with the partnership. Retiring, continuing, and surviving partners as to their status after the solution. For a retiring partner, one who after the solution ceases to be a partner, which is carries on by the other, he is liable for partnership obligations incurred while he was a partner, but not subsequent ones provided he has given the necessary notice of the solution. For a continuing partner, partners who continue the business after it has been dissolved due to the retirement or death of one or more of the other partners. Surviving partners, these are partners who remain after the solution by death. On them are reposed the duty of liquidating the partnership affairs unless continuation of the business has been agreed upon. Partners by Stopo. Although not an actual partner, he has made himself liable as such by holding himself out as a partner or allowing himself to be so held out. Rights and Obligation of Partnership. Responsibilities of the partnership to partners. Refund the amounts disbursed by partners in behalf of the partnership plus corresponding interest from the time the expenses are made, that is loans and advances made by a partner to the partnership aside from capital contribution. Number two, answer for obligations a partner may have contracted in good faith in the interest of the partnership business. Number three, answer for risks in consequence of its management, Article 1796. Rights and obligations of partners among themselves. Article 1784. A partnership begins from the moment of the execution of the contract unless it is otherwise stipulated. Upon perfection of the contract of partnership, the partners are immediately bound by certain obligations which exist 
even if not expressly agreed upon by them, because they are provided by law. These obligations form part of the contract as natural elements thereof. What is a promised contribution? Obligations with respect to contribution of property. 1. To contribute at the beginning of the partnership or at the stipulated time the money, property, or industry which he may have promised to contribute. Number 2. To answer for eviction in case the partnership is deprived of the determinate property contributed. To answer to the partnership for the fruits of the property, the contribution of which he delayed, made the date they should have been contributed up to the time of actual delivery. Number four, to preserve said property with the diligence of a good father of a family pending delivery to the partnership. Article 1796. The partnership shall be responsible to every partner for the amount he may have dispersed on behalf of the partnership and for the corresponding interest from the time the expense are made. It shall also answer to each partner for the obligation he may have contracted in good faith in the interest of the partnership business and for risks in consequence of its management. Number five, to indemnify partnership for any damage caused to it by the retention of the same or by the delay in its contribution. Effect of failure to contribute property promised. One, partners become ipso jure a debtor of the partnership, even in the absence of any demand. Number two, remedy of the other partners is not rescission, but specific performance with damages from the defaulting partner. Bearing risk of loss of things contributed. Specific and determinate things which partner are not fungible where only the use is contributed. Specific and determinate things the ownership of which is transferred to the partnership. Fungible things. Things contributed to be sold. Things bought and appraised in the inventory. Specific and determinate things which are not fungible where only the use is contributed partner obligations with respect to contribution of money and money converted to personal use article 1788 one to contribute on the date fixed the amount he has undertaken to contribute to the partnership number two to reimburse any amount he may have taken from the partnership covers and converted to his own use. 3. To pay for the agreed or legal interest if he fails to pay his contribution on time or in case he takes any amount from the common fund and converts it to his own use. Number 4. To indemnify the partnership of the damages caused to it by the delay in the contribution or conversion of any sum for his personal benefit. Obligations with respect to contribution to partnership capital. Article 1790. Partners must contribute equal shares to the capital of the partnership unless there is stipulation to the contrary. Number two, partners, capitalists must contribute additional capital in case of imminent loss to the business of the partnership and there is no stipulation otherwise. Refusal to do so shall create an obligation on his part to sell his interest to the other partners. Fiduciary duty. A partnership is a fiduciary relation, one entered into and to be maintained on the basis of trust and confidence. A partner must observe the utmost good faith, fairness, and integrity in his dealings with the others. Number one, he cannot directly or indirectly use partnership assets for his own benefit. He cannot carry on a business of the partnership for his private advantage. He cannot, in conducting the business of the partnership, take any profit clandestinely. He cannot obtain for himself that he should have obtained for the partnership. He cannot avail himself of knowledge or information which may be properly regarded as the property of the partnership. Prohibition against engaging in competitive business.
passed in 2001. One capitalist partner cannot engage in business within the same line of business with the partnership unless partnership expressly permits him to do so, Article 1789. Consequences, he may be required to bring to the common fund the profits he derived from the other business. He shall personally bear the losses. He may be ousted from the partnership, especially if there is a warning. Number two, industrial partner cannot engage in business with the same line of business with a partnership for his own account unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. Article 1808. Consequences? He can be excluded from the partnership. The capitalist partners can avail of the benefits he obtained from the business. The capitalist partners have the right to file an action for damages against the industrial partner in either case. Obligations with respect to management. General rule. All partners have equal rights in the management and conduct of the partnership business. Partner is appointed manager in the Articles of Partnership. Power of managing partner is irrevocable without just or lawful cause, revocable only when in bad faith. Vote of partners representing controlling interests is necessary to revoke power. Partner is appointed manager after constitution of partnership. The power is revocable at any time for any cause. Two or more persons entrusted with management of partnership without specification of duties stipulation that each shall not act without the other's consent. Well, each may execute all acts of administration. In case of opposition, decision of majority shall prevail. In case of a tie, decision of the partners owing controlling interest shall prevail. Have I stipulated that none of the managing partners shall act without the consent of the others? Concurrence of all partners to uphold validity of the act? Absence or disability of any one cannot be alleged unless there is imminent danger or grave or irreparable injury to the partnership. Have the manner of management is not agreed upon. All partners are agents of the partnership. Number two, unanimous consent required for alteration of immovable property. If refusal of one partner is manifestly prejudicial to the interests of the partnership, court intervention may be sought except when authorized by the other partners or unless they have abandoned the business. One or more, but less than all the partners, have no authority to, one, assign the partnership property in trust for creditors or on the assignee's promise to pay the debts of the partnership. Number two, dispose of the goodwill of the business. Three, do any other act which would make it impossible to carry on the ordinary business of the partnership. 4. Confess a judgment. 5. Enter into a compromise concerning a partnership claim or liability. Number 6. Submit a partnership claim or liability to arbitration. And number 7. Renounce a claim of the partnership. No act of a partner in contravention of a restriction on authority shall bind the partnership to persons having knowledge of the restriction. Obligation of managing partners who collects debt from person who is also owed the partnership. Article 1792. 1. Apply sum collected to two credits in proportion to their amounts. Number 2. If he receive it for the account of partnership, the whole sum shall be applied to partnership credit. Requisites. There exists at least two debts, one where the collecting partner is creditor and the other where the partnership is the creditor. Number two, both debts are demandable. Number three, the partner who collects is authorized to manage and actually manages the partnership. Obligation of the partner who receives share of partnership credit. Obliged to bring to the partnership capital what he has received even though he may have given receipt for his share only. Article 1793. Requisites. A partner has received in whole or in part his share of the partnership credit. Number two, the other partners have not collected their shares. 
And number three, the partnership debtor has become insolvent. Distribution of profits and losses. A stipulation which includes one or more partners from any share in the profits or losses is void. Profits with agreement. According to agreement, losses according to agreement, if sharing of profits is stipulated, same apply to losses. Shares of capitalist partner in proportion to his capital contribution. When without agreement, share of industrial partner is not fixed, as may be just and equitable under the circumstances. If no profit sharing stipulated, born according to capital contribution. Purely industrial partner is not liable for losses. Property rights of a partner. Article 1810. 1. His rights in specific partnership property. Number 2. His interest in the partnership. 3. His right to participate in the management. Nature of partner's rights in specific partnership property. Article 1811. Partners have equal rights to possession. Number 2. Which are not assignable. 3. Such right is limited to the shares of what remains after partnership debts have been paid. Number four, it is not subject to attachment or execution except on a claim against the partnership. Number five, it is not subject to legal support. Nature of partner's interest in the partnership. Share in the profits and surplus. Obligations of partnership, partners to third person. Every partnership shall operate under a firm name. Number two, person who include their names in the partnership name even if they are not members, shall be liable as a partner. Article 1815. Number three, all partners shall be liable for contractual obligations of the partnership with their property. After all, partnership assets have been exhausted pro rata or subsidiary. Number four, admission or representation made by a partner concerning partnership affairs within scope of his authority is evidence against the partnership. Number five, notice to partner of any matter relating to partnership affairs operates as notice to partnership except in case of fraud. Knowledge of partner acting in the particular matter acquired while a partner. Knowledge of the partner acting in the particular matter then present to his mind. Knowledge of any other partner who reasonably could and should have communicated it to the acting partner. Partners and the partnership are solidarily liable to third persons for the partner's stort or breach of trust. Liability of incoming partner is limited to his share in the partnership property for existing obligations, his separate property for subsequent obligations. Creditors or partnership preferred in partnership property and may attach partner's share in partnership assets. Every partner is an agent of the partnership. Acts within apparent authority, partners as agents. Every partner is an agent and may execute acts with binding effects even if he is not authorized. Acts of agency is not carrying the usual business of the partnership exception when third person has no authority, does not bind partnership unless authorized by other partners. Acts in contravention of granted authority. Partners not liable to third persons having actual or presumptive knowledge of the restriction. Contractual obligation. General rule. Each partner is the agent of the partnership for the conduct of its business. Where an act of a partner is within his apparent authority, it is incumbent upon an objecting partner to prove not only the acting partner's lack of authority, but also knowledge of such lack of authority in the person with whom such acting partner dealt. Third persons. The authority of a partner must be sought in the actual agreement of the partners or through implication arising from the nature of the business or the actual or usual manner in which it is conducted by the particular partnership or by similar partnerships in the same locality 
or else from a reasonable inference of its necessity or fitness for the successful operation of a particular business. A contract executed by a partner in behalf of the partnership is binding upon it. If the same is essential or reasonably necessary to the furtherance of the partnership business. Contract of employment. Generally, each partner has, in the ordinary course of the partnership's business, the power to bind the firm and other partners by the employment of third persons whose services are reasonably necessary for carrying on its business. Purchases of property. Purchases made by a partner of property within the scope of the partnership's business come within his apparent authority and are binding on the partnership. Conveyance or disposal of property. Disposal of partnership assets in the usual course of business, assets which are its stock in trade or held for the purpose of sale, comes within the scope of a partner's apparent authority and is such disposal is therefore binding on the partnership even though it be made in bad faith by a partner for the purpose of defrauding his co-partner if the other party to the transaction is in good faith. For real property, titles is in the name of the partnership. A conveyance by a partner in his own name passes the equitable interests of the partnership provided that the act in one within the partner's authority under Article 1818. Title is in the name of one or more, but not all the partners. If the record does not disclose the right of the partnership, the partners may convey title to such property, but the partnership may recover the property if the partner's act does not bind the partnership under Article 1818, unless the purchaser is a holder of value without knowledge. Title is in the name of one, more, or all of the partners, or a third person in trust for the partnership. A conveyance by a partner in the partnership name or in his own name passes the equitable interest of the partnership, provided that the act in one within the partner's authority under Article 1818. Titles is in the name of all the partners. Their conveyance passes all their rights in such property. Note, the right to convey conferred by Article 1819 includes the right to mortgage. How about for personal property? A partner's power of disposition extends not to tangible chattel alone, but to intangible ones. Choices in action as well. Leases. A lease signed by one partner only binds the partnership where the lease is made in furtherance of the partner's ship's business. How about mar borrowing money? Scope of authority of a partner in a commercial partner or in a non-commercial partner. So, the transaction is held to be within the implied power of a partner to enter into, into and hence the partnership is liable, even if the borrowing partner misapplies or converts the money. How about non-commercial? No such power is recognized in the absence of proof that it is necessary or customary in the pursuance of its business. Regardless of the trading or non-trading character of the partnership, it is not liable on a loan made to one partner solely on its credit even though he uses the money for the partnership. But the fact that the note given for the loan was signed by the partner individually while a circumstance in determining the intention of the parties does not necessarily relieve the partnership of liability. If the partner had authority to bind the firm and the action was taken with this intent and was so accepted. While in negotiable instruments, notes executed by a partner in the ordinary course of business are binding on the other partners even though they had no knowledge of the execution thereof. Under pledges and mortgages, the authority of the partner, even without the knowledge or consent of his co-partner or co-partners, to pledge or mortgage any or all of the personal property of the firm to secure its debts is generally recognized. But he is not allowed to apply firm assets to the payment of his 
separate obligations. He has no authority to pledge or mortgage them for said obligations without his partner's consent. With respect to real estate, Article 1819 applies. Okay, and if you find this helpful and you have any suggestions for the next upload, kindly hit that subscribe button and let's study together. Thanks.